Good morning everybody. How are you all today? I hope you're well. I've just quickly dashed down to my garden because I want to collect some of my gorgeous flint corn to take home and play with. Yay! Uh, if any of you follow my Facebook page, you will have seen, I don't know, a couple of days ago, I was having computer problems, I was on the phone with some geek from Microsoft Thank the Lord for geeks from Microsoft. Um, I was on hold and kind of on the phone with him for two hours on speakerphone whilst my computer was having things done to it remotely. I don't understand how that works, but anyway, it got it fixed. <clears throat> but it was taking forever. Now the thing is, I'd taken five cobs home to have a play with. Hadn't got round to it, so what better whilst one is sitting <laughs> speaking to some guy in Lord knows where, America, I don't know, um, than to start having a play with them. So it took me a few minutes to kind of work out the best way to get the kernels off the cobs. Then I had to go popping them and it worked. I risk off the lot. And then I had to go milling them, which also worked. So what I'm gonna do is take some of them home today and then we'll go in the kitchen in a minute and have a play with them together. I'm so delighted that they worked because, well the thing is, I was planning to grow them again even if I didn't get any food out of them, purely because I loved the plant so much and it's a bit naughty because when you consider how little space I have here I have to make every inch work, but there are three plants that I will always grow purely for how they look because they're so gorgeous. I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but anyway, fennel. My goodness, I love my fennel with that great kind of froth of fronds on them. They look like they look like all the petticoats, the frilly petticoats of a line of what do you call them, can can girls. Love it. The fact that I get a bulb that I can eat, brilliant. My other fave is chickpeas. They're so beautiful with their sort of long arching fronds and then absolutely covered in myriad white flowers in the summer. Beautiful. And the bees absolutely love them. It's always a mass of bees. So although the harvest at the end of 2017 was a disaster because of the mice, I got enough for seed for this year, thank goodness. Um, so even though I didn't get any food out of it, the way I look at it is I kept the bees happy last summer. That's got to be a good thing, hasn't it? But my new favourite plant to grow is the flint corn. It's so magnificent. I kind of had a little idea of what to expect because there are folk on this site who grow sweet corn. But my goodness, the flint corn outdid sweet corn for miles and miles. I mean, the sweet corn I've seen growing here gets to maybe five foot but quite skinny little leaves. They're quite spindly looking things. Whereas the flint corn was huge. It was getting to like eight foot in places with these beautiful, lush, broad, bright green leaves on them. Beautiful. And then in the height of summer, looking up through this, these great green leaves to the blue sky. It, I, it was like I was transported to the Caribbean or somewhere. It just felt so tropical and exotic and gorgeous so I had decided to grow them again anyway but the fact that I get food out of them is that's a massive Bertie bonus anyway enough chat let's get some of these down I would say in terms of hang on let me get a few down and I'll turn back to you all Let's see, how many do I want today? I'm just going to do another little handful with you all. Just picking random ones of beautiful colours. And let's face it, that's another bonus, isn't it? I mean, look at, look at the purples in that. Isn't that beautiful? <clears throat> so in terms of care, they were actually a really, really easy crop. I put them in the ground. I did some of them a direct sowed, some I started off in loo roll pots. But once they're in the ground, I didn't have to do anything. They're planted quite closely together, 10 inches by 10 inches in either direction. That was sort of following some advice from a grower in the States. 
I think partly because they were so close and also because of this mega lush canopy, it suppressed the weeds, so I didn't have to get in and weed. Uh, in terms of feed, they were quite greedy. They're like a nitrogen feed. That's no problem because my fertiliser is really high in nitrogen. Yay! Well, not high in nitrogen, but it's got a good amount of nitrogen. So what I found in the summer months when I was really struggling to make a fertiliser because I was hot and sweaty, I would always make sure that at least once a week all my climbing beans and my flint corn got a feed of my fertiliser and they seemed to love it. So care wise, absolutely pretty much diddly squat. The harvest was immense fun. I don't know if you saw the video, I may, I may link it on the end of this, but it was such fun getting right in amongst them, like being five years old in a den again grow them for a den if nothing else actually if you've got kids and whether you're you know a child mind or if it's your own kids think about planting maybe like a circle of them with a little opening so they can get in because it'll make a great den i want a den again this year so the harvest was really pretty easy it probably took me oh 20 30 minutes to strip the lot the time consuming thing was getting them ready for drying, so turning back the leaves, tying them up and getting them hum up, hung up um, probably took a couple of hours or so for, I don't know, there's got to be probably about 80 cobs in the end. For the drying, they, so when did I harvest? I think it was right at the beginning of November, so we were just getting chilly, but they've actually dried fine in the shed. They, I left them on the plants to dry as long as possible and it was really noticeable in the last couple of weeks of October how they did start to go over and really dry. So then a couple of months of hanging in the shed, it's not warm in here but it's dry and it seems to have done the trick. So give them a go this year if you get the opportunity. Right, let's get these home and get scoffing. Phew, I'm back in the kitchen. <laughs> So I've had a crazy morning and afternoon, running around like a lunatic, filthy dirty on the allotment, running, or shall I say hobbling, a million and one errands. I came home filthy dirty, hot and sweaty, so a quick wash, and I now feel ready for curling up on the sofa for an hour with a book, and hopefully a bowl of popcorn. So, yesterday, was it yesterday? No, a couple of days ago, these are some of the ones that I, um, got off a couple of days ago. This is about four, about four cobs worth because I had another cobs worth when I popped them the other day. Beautiful. I'm going to use some of these in a minute, but I'm just going to quickly show you. This bit's not easy. Let me see if you can see. Getting the kernels off the cob. So one thing I will advise is they can go flying. So I'm doing mine on a tray. Look at the colours, aren't they gorgeous? When I was first trying it, I was sort of trying to sort of pick off going sideways, but I realised after a while that it's easier to sort of push them forwards towards the end. So it's a little bit hard to get them started right on the tip, but once you've started, whoops, it's not too bad. See what I mean about them going flying? It's not the easiest job in the world. I don't know if anyone has any tips for a quicker way to do this. But, again, it's one of those things you could probably do if you're chatting on a phone hands-free or if you're watching TV, watching a movie or something. I don't suggest you take this to the pictures to do, but if you're watching a film at home... Anyway, you get the... <laughs> You get the idea, A, that they go flying, and B, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world. With all the bits uh, that are left over, because they're really dry, what I'll do is I'll chop them up quite small and add them to some chopped, wet, green compost in order to um, get composting. Right, let's have a go at popping. I've got enough oil just to cover the bottom of the pan. And the great thing about this pan of mine, you mostly see me co cooking with my raw iron pans. Brilliant. But I've got this little teeny tiny pan, which is great for just 
reheating a single portion of soup. But it's also fab because it's got a glass lid so we can see what's going on inside. Right, I need two pairs of hands, which I don't have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the corn in and then I'm gonna bring you guys over. Please just be really careful because you'll have your oil hot just when you're putting the corn in that you don't splash yourselves. Please be careful. So in goes the corn. Lid goes straight on. Let's bring you guys around. Please pop. <laughs> please, please pop. There we go. Sorry, the light's reflecting a bit, isn't it? Woo! Starting. And of course, isn't this a lovely thing to do with kids as well? They love it. We're actually not going to be able to see much as some of the oil splashes onto the lid. You'll need to give it a couple of um, shrugs so they don't stick on the bottom and burn, which I'm going to do now. I'm just going to set you guys down again a second. Bear with me. I know I'm having all the fun, aren't I? Hang on a sec. And again, just when you're sort of giving your pan a toss, make sure if like mine, it's got a bit of a steam hole, don't get yourself splashed with the hot oil. Dare I look? I haven't put anything in with this, like salt or herbs or anything else, because I like mine absolutely plain. I think I've just got done. Now my candles are really tiny, so I don't know if I didn't get something quite right with um, the growing conditions where the kernels should have been bigger. Because the kernels are small, of course, my popped corn is small too. But I don't care about size. It's all about the taste. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Hold on, let me tip you down again. I'm going to aim you down here. Oh, I just heard one more pop. Yum, yum, yum. Can I do this left-handed to show you, hopefully? But there we go. Popped flint corn. Yay! Oh my goodness, it's just, it's so simple. And mm, yum, 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 mm, so tasty. Mm, 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 mm. Watch out for any kernels that haven't popped. You don't want to bite them and break one of your teeth. Okay, I'm going to sit that aside for a second to cool a little bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you how I milled some corn as well. So I wasn't sure what to mill my corn in. So I'm just going to a bit more popcorn. A load of folks suggested a coffee mill. And I thought, well, I don't have a coffee mill because I don't drink coffee. But I do have my Nutribullet, so surely that's worth a go. Now, just to say, if you've got one... There are two sets of blades. This one is the one I make my smoothies with. Chops up all your fruit and veggies beautifully. This one, much sturdy little fella, this is the one you use for grinding down nuts. I did try it. I, I wanted some slightly ground nuts to do with my butternut squash one day. Um, put them in here for two seconds and it ground them to a complete powder, which also gave me the courage to think it might work for the corn. So I'm just going to show you a little bit so you get a cup with it. Pop those in there. See? I'm just doing a tiny amount to show you. I think it's going to be probably best for the flour if when I mill it, I mill it just immediately before I want to use it. Because obviously the, the kernel is acting like a little package, keeping all the inside good. So once I've milled it, that package is broken open. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Okay, really, really noisy bit a second. Hang on, let me show you. It's, um, it's scarily noisy and destructive, this thing. Are you ready? Block your ears. Oh, <laughs> turn it on at the wall first. Now block your ears. Okay, so that's a few seconds, but you can see how it's still really quite grainy. It almost looks like sand on the beach with sort of a little bit of seashells in it still. So I think ideally it's going to need probably 20, 25 seconds each time. Mm. 
and I guess as well, it um, I experiment with different recipes and different sort of grades of how soft I make it. Which I'm going to turn you guys around because the light there is rubbish, isn't it? Bear with me a second. There we go. We'll get some natural daylight helping us here. So, can you? Oh, it's a bit hard to see in there, isn't it? Let me put it in my hand. Actually, if I pour it, hopefully you might be able to... Whee! Didn't mean to do it so fast. Hang on. If I pour it, you see it's, it's considerably finer. So, to me, that's... It's still, it's slightly coarser in texture than, say, a wholemeal flour. I use mostly wholemeal. It is much, much coarser. But I think that's going to be one of the things that's lovely about it is that... It's not trying to pretend to, you know, make a fluffy white loaf. It's going to be for other things. I don't know what yet. I'm hoping I can make some sort of little flatbreads that I could use as a wrap for sort of salady things in the summer. We'll see. Anyway, the point is... Let me get you back up here. The point is, I'm so excited that... Well, this plant that I completely, completely fell in love with last year. Thank you again, Michelle, for sending the seeds. I absolutely fell in love with the plant. And to know that it's giving me a yummy snack like popcorn. You know, pretty healthy snack, all things considered, especially because it doesn't have any salt or sugar on it. I'm getting a healthy snack. I'm getting the possibility of making my own sort of flatbreads we'll see i'll give it a go and if i have any success whatever happens i'll show you guys too so that if any of you are growing it this year and hoping to get some flour then we'll we'll have that little um educational journey together so for now because i'm absolutely dead on my feet i'm going to go and collapse on the sofa with my book my bowl of popcorn i will probably fall asleep and dream of this summer's flint corn. Yay! I have to remember to save some of this for seed and not eat it all. For now I say cheerio, happy experimenting in your kitchens, happy seed catalogue browsing and buying. I reckon there's going to be a few of you now who are going to try this glass gem flint corn this year. Please do. You saw how gorgeous it was in my garden last year. Have fun with it. Let me know. Until the next time, take care, everyone.